Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Getting Creative With, the show where AADL staff engage with an arbitrarily chosen topic to stay playful, stay inspired, and as the name suggests, creative. My name is Ksenia, and with me today are Heidi, Aurora, and Marianne, and this week's theme was paper. You preserve ideas on it. You can make airplanes out of it, fortune-telling devices, tissue, wallpaper, so many things. Heidi, what on earth did you do with it? <laughs> I, I, I did quite a few things. Um, so a few months ago, I was playing around with paper mache, um, trying to fill the void of not having like clay to work with and wanting to sculpt like sculpt like clay, but using paper mache, using strips of newspaper. So not like the pulpy kind of paper mache. And so I had made like a, a pot, like a little vase vessel and it was very traditional and whatever. And I just never did anything with it to finish it because I just didn't know what I wanted to do. And I think I didn't really like the form. And it was more about just like, oh, the process and can I do this? So never really got back to working with that. And then suddenly it struck me, um, you know, it's paper and I like to do embroidery on paper. So I thought, well, why not embroider on this paper mache pot? So that's where I started off and I've had to cut the top off. I'm like, well, maybe I'll be able to reattach it because I want to be able to do some stitching like around the shoulder and then reattach the top or whatever. Um, but then I didn't really like the top. I wanted something more of an organic shape. So step one, I, I made this item where I finished it. I painted it with a black acrylic and then I did this embroidery um, or I started to, I ended up not finishing it. So I was, I was working on this and I, after a while, it's like, you know, I really, I just don't care for this. <laughs> so, and as I was working on stitching, sometimes the acrylic paint, cause it's kind of plastic, it's not flexible. Um, it would chip off when I'd poke the needle through. And I don't know, I was just like, you know, I just don't think this is like the look I was going for. Also, I don't need any more objects that sit on something because I just don't have anywhere to put anything. So I would really much rather have something I can put up on the wall. So I had to make a new, some new paper mache things. And so I was playing around with that and I wanted to do something a little more abstract. So I went and I did this, um, which this light is really bright on there. So I, I didn't finish this one either, but <laughs> I was like, I just want to do like a, a patch of embroidery just for an accent. Um, also, I decided to use tissue paper to do the finish instead of paint, because it's just a softer, I like the texture better, that kind of thing. But I still was like, this isn't totally, I wasn't sure, you know, as it was going on, I'm like, I'm not sure how I'm feeling about this. Suddenly it struck me, well, there's all these dried plants outside. Why don't I incorporate plants into what I'm doing? So that's where I've landed. It's still not finished, but I have worked on this. So this, I took a dried milkweed stem and I kind of had to stitch it on to attach it. And then I've just been doing some random embroidery. Um, and I just, I'm not done with it yet, but and I'm not quite sure the back is open. I could just leave it like this and do something to hang it on the wall. Um, ideally though, I was going to do something more enclosed like a pod shape that would sit on the wall. So I might, I don't know. So, so that's where we're at. <laughs> Embroidery on paper mache with plants. I really like it. I love the I love the milkweed. Is it, is it very hard to embroidery in your paper mache, or do you have to poke a hole ahead of time before you? You do. Yeah, even with paper, you have to to poke the guide holes first, so that um, it just so the needle goes through more easily. So I have some tools like this um, that I can use to to poke, poke my stuff with, so, yeah. It's gorgeous, I think you should hang it on the wall. Yeah, I, w I will, yeah. I really, I think it's, yeah. And I have some other materials, like I have some, I was working on making a bigger one. I have all these old plaster molds from when I used to do pottery that are fairly large, but just kind of a nice gentle slope. So I'm working on that, but the paper mache hadn't dried so I haven't gotten around to working with it yet, but um, it was fun going out into the shed and digging these things out only to find um, um, mice tend to make nests in our shed in different places. And they had nested in this nice deep bowl of one of them, but it was an abandoned nest, fortunately. So I could just dump that and I bleached the heck out of it. And I, <laughs> I figure it's okay to use. <laughs> so do you think like, 
it's a uh, a milkweed pot pod right the yes yeah and the stem did you treat it with anything to preserve it or are you just gonna leave it or what are you gonna do I'm just gonna leave it because I think nature has done enough to dry it out yeah. where I think it's it's preserved that's that's kind of what I was thinking about you know going outside this time of year anything that's there you know it's yeah because it's, it's durable yeah. you know I had like some spearmint and I mean it's it's not, I mean, it's a little bit fragile, but it's not as fragile, you know, as a, as a fresher plant. So, yeah. That's so very nice. never, yeah. I've, I've never seen like paper embroidery before that. I mean, just like in journal entries and things like that. Yeah. It's like, I've seen uh, embroidery in that way, but never on paper mache or like sculpture like that. Yeah. Um, what, uh, what sort of string yarn floss did you use? I suppose. For this, I used crochet thread because I wanted something that was kind of heavy. Um, typically, when I do paper embroidery, I use like a machine embroidery thread, which is much finer, um, just for the designs that I'm working with. I, you know, I work on cardstock usually, but um, yeah. And I so, still kind of want to play with making some kind of vessels, some more like pod-like things, and and doing the what my intention was. Like that idea is not gone. It's just not activated right now <laughs> it's just a dormant plan i guess at this point <laughs> so do you have to treat your paper mache before you glued on your um mealwig and then before you frost it or do you just uh do it and do you have to treat the um the coating the oh that's a good question yeah i thought like yeah because like do i have to seal it so that no i right. didn't seal this one um like like this one is sealed and I had done like a, um, what do you call it, gesso first mm -hmm. over it and then painted it with the acrylic paint. So it's not like it's water soluble or water tight, but it's um, it's a little more protected from water, whereas this other one isn't. And I just use a paste of flour and water um, when, I, when I make my paper mache. You could also do glue and water or something like that. But. Mm -hmm. So nope, That's it's cool. it's it is it is a non-archival piece right here. <laughs> Temporal, I love it. And <laughs> it's it's funny that you say, I mean, it's just impressive, honestly, that you're like, oh, typically when I do paper mache embroider, and I'm over here like, what's that? <laughs> um, so like, do you have to wait for it to dry fully after you paint it uh, before you embroider it, or like, I don't, I wouldn't even know where to begin, honestly. It might be yeah. Just, like, it has to be pretty dry because otherwise it's too soft. And especially with like the tissue paper, it just, it starts to scrape away. Like, yeah, so it has to be pretty firm to work with. And did you do any sanding at all before you painted it or did it just? I didn't on this one. On, on this pot, I did. On some of the other ones when I was making a pot because they were kind of lumpy, I would, I did sand them down to try and get a little bit better shape. But I mean, you can still see. It kind of looks like a pinch pot though, which I like. You know, yeah, yeah. as you do pinch pots, like you get the little indentations, but um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows what's going to happen with that? And initially I was going to, I, before I had painted this like months and months ago, because I didn't know what to do with the pot, I was going to set it in a fire and watch it burn. Like I thought, well, it's paper, you know, that'd be cool. But I, I kept forgetting. So it lived, it lived a longer life than it was supposed to. <laughs> Oh, nice. Yeah, another project to add to my to-do list. Paper mache embroidery. Thank you, <laughs> Heidi. <laughs> <Yeah>. <clears throat> and so um, next, I think Aurora's next, isn't she? I think so. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Aurora, what do you have for us this week? So I also have two things I was working on. Um, papers is so many ideas to make it. So my first one, I actually used newspaper and I cut them up and roll them up into like a straw and then I paint them. And then um, after I paint them, then I put them weaving. So I don't know if you can't see it. it it's like a vase. So it's, it's you put different and you attach it and keep on um, weaving up. So make it into like a colorful vase. It's a temporary piece, but it's light and something that could be put it on my house. It's pretty easy to um, do, um, just kind of figured out what colors. And so I just thought, um, I like blue, so I thought there's bottom of the ocean and throw up and, mm -hmm. and then I've just put some dry flowers on top. 
And my other one that I thought would be fun to play with was um, I saw somewhere about they making paper dogs. So I did a paper dog. So, and I thought that'd be something fun to do and um, different. And you just cut um, the paper in the strip and then you just glued it on it after you get the shape of the dog in the cardboard. And I happened to make some, um, I just happened to have some black and gray paper. So I just put a strip of it and just put it more like a 3D. So that's what I did online. I give up. Basically. I know. <laughs> that is amazing. That dog is so cool. That is so cool. So it's just a cardboard form and then you. Yeah. So you can see the cardboard. Oh, cool. Do you have a template for that or did you just make that? Um, I saw it somewhere and where someone did one and kind of have a two um, a body, just a body, one piece, and then you have a head, and then that's it. And then you just cut it and glue it, and then you just play with it. And I happen to have black and gray paper, so I thought it's, I want to be more subtle. Um, the other person actually used newspaper, but I, since I already did the other one with newspaper, I thought this will be more subtle looking. And it's kind of fun. It'd be temporary, like you said, to be sitting in my house for a while. I don't have a pet, so this will be my pet. <laughs> yeah, does it have a name? Did you name it yet? <laughs> no, I did not. <laughs> no. But I thought it'd be fun to sit on my uh, table to have it. How did you um, How did you weave the paper vase? Yeah. It looked so. Um, so basically, it's if you look at the bottom, it's it's a five point, and yeah. then you glue the uh, the paper store in five area and then as you put them it's just like a weaving ba basket you pick it up and you put over on top another and then you just bend the other one over and then you keep weaving it around around just like a basket but you just use uh newspapers you make wow. it sound so easy yeah it's so beautiful it's, it's kind of fun to make <laughs> I never tried it i thought this is something different I mean, normally, you know, you see people cut paper or something different. But I like the one um, Heidi did too. It's a 3D and something different. Mm -hmm. Yours looks like it, it took some time just because you had to roll all those tubes and then assembly. And it makes a beautiful, I think that'd be a gorgeous centerpiece. I mean, that's just mm -hmm. the painting you did on that is beautiful. So you have to tell us about the painting too. What you look like you're about to say something. So the, the most time that I do on a project is rolling these little paper because I try to make sure um, because they tell you take a piece of newspaper half of it and then cut in three and then as you roll it sometimes you can't control it the length of it so after a while I um, they tell you about there's five sections and each section about um, 15 pieces so I try to make them um, similar colors I mean height and thickness um, but sometimes you can but that's okay because when you glued it together it, it doesn't really matter and then um, like I said I choose the five different colors so you can see this is one set and this is second set and third four and five so as they go up the colors you you just weave the colors and around and um, the weaving is really simple it just basically you have to paint it and let it dry for a while. And you have mm -hmm. about 75 sticks that you paint on. Um, mm -hmm. That's the most thing that take time, just rolling and painting. Is it, what kind of paint, is it acrylic paint? Or it looks like it has a sheen to it. I don't know. Yeah, it, it's acrylic, but it has a, um, a shine to it kind of paint mm -hmm. yeah. that, um, Huh. That I think I had it somewhere in back of my desk for some. And then um, actually this one, I this is a fabric paint because I didn't have any brown, but I have some fabric paint that's brown. So I just used that. And that happened to be shiny as well. It, it worked out for me. 
And how did you adhere the uh, the paper to itself? Like when after you rolled it, did you just use a glue stick to uh, form the tube? I use um, tacky glue. So usually I dab a tacky glue and then slide one into it. Um, try to find the, the narrow point to the bigger point. So that when you slide it in, when you attach to the glue, it will stay. And then tacky glue is pretty good because um, I don't have to wait it to dry forever to continue weaving. I let it dry for maybe 10 minutes and then continuously working on it. But when you make the roll itself, like when you make the straw, how do you get it to just stay uh, with what kind of adhesive? Um, actually, I use glue stick on this one. I just, as I get too close to, so it would be from one corner to another corner. So by the time it gets to it, I just use glue stick and then just let it sit for a while. It will stay. Yeah, that is so cool. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. I mean, something that you could do. I mean, I thought, what can I come up with? And I just look for different ideas. And you know. it's gorgeous. Um, I like that the prerequisite is like it's simple. It's just like basket weaving. <laughs> yeah, it is. I when I when I because the whoever did one um, online, it didn't really show other than just here's the material, this is what you do, and, and this is some of the pictures that she does. But then I kind of get the idea, the weaving of it, because it's going circle, and that's yeah. all. Yeah. Well, I love how accessible this is, because, like, you know, you just need some cardboard and glue and paper for the dog, and then, yeah, just regular paper and some paint for the, for the base. And you don't really need any special tools for it, right? You oh, didn't mm -mm, use a tool mm -mm. or a, a hook. You just did it by hand. Yeah. So. That's, yeah, it's like a really yeah, low barrier. Because they suggest that you um, use a shredder's um, piece, but I find that for my shredder, the piece is really short. So actually, I have to hand cut these strips just to get it long enough to cover the body. Otherwise, if you run it through the shredders, um, they are really short and I can't use it. Got it. Beautiful. Well, that's amazing. And to segue, it, I mean, mine looks like a kindergarten project compared to yours, so this is fun. <laughs> I, um, I've worked with paper mache clay before, but I've only ever used it to make um, smaller sculptures and beads and things like that. Um, so I tried using a paper mache clay recipe from ultimatepapermache.com. Um, that it, that's it's a website where this woman um makes these gorgeous really smooth and detailed um animal masks and sculptures and stuff mm -hmm. and so I, i've used the recipe before for smaller projects like i said but i was like okay let's just go bigger and i used the coil method to wrap um around a bowl and um essentially create something that you know a little candy dish um i learned a lot <laughs> during this project um, mainly one of the things that this, this person on ultimate paper mache says is once when you, when you soak the toilet paper that you use for the paper bag, don't squeeze out too much of the water because it's going to become really clumpy when you go to make the dough, um, which includes glue, corn, starch, or flour, and, um, um, drywall. Oh, no, sorry. Joint composite, joint composite. And so I became I was really enthusiastic about squeezing all the water out so um it turned out very lumpy um but you know it's fine it's sturdy it's very thick it's heavy it is watertight which is really cool and I really appreciate but something I really wanted to do is you know make it more you know paper project-esque so I marbled it with some um, nail polish mm. so just you know typical little tray of water dropped some nail polish in it, stirred around with a skewer till I had, you know, a look and just dipped it. Um, and that was, yeah, it was really cool. So this is going to be a really loud candy dish because we have none, although it's going to probably go in the cupboard, but <laughs> um, it was really cool learning more about large scale paper mache clay production. I would have made it thinner I would have used a different um, 
form underneath it because it's really hard to work on like a plastic coated metal bowl essentially. Um, and yeah, I think I would have probably sanded it more. Um, but this is my marbled paper mache Woo! clay bowl. That was fun. <laughs> I like the yellow inside. Yeah, it was, it was just, it was a happy project. So it was just really yeah. a fun thing to make. Um, but yeah, definitely could use some more refining. So when I saw Heidi's paper mache little, little like vessel, I'm like, man, so thin. How did you do that? <laughs> but um, I think, yeah, if I hadn't squeezed out so much of the water from the toilet paper, it would have been easier to smooth out um, against my, my form. But there it is. And oh, this apparently shatters. So I had some dry pieces that were just like scraps that I had um, shaved off and planed off and stuff. And I dropped a couple of them on the floor. They crack like, like actual um, clay vessels. So <laughs> that's, you know, why me just almost dropping it was really fun and exciting. <laughs> but yeah, there it is. so storage. That's and wild that it shatters like that. Like that's, I guess that'd be useful for like, um, Filming some like for special effects, like if you want to break a vase, you have to actually break a clay vase. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was super dramatic, you know. <laughs> so I really. Uh, so is time. your bow waterproof? It is. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So I I used um I used like an outdoor mod mod podge uh, coating on it, okay. and um, Heidi, something you mentioned actually was using gesso on yours to, to seal it, which I didn't do with mine. I just did um, paint and then, and then Mod Podge. But yeah, I think like the gesso may have, may help, I think, smooth it out, maybe look less like crumpled paper. <laughs> so that's something for me to try next time, I think. Um, but yeah, watertight. I dropped something in it the other day and I was just able to scrub it out. So that was nice. Um, Sounds really durable. Yeah. yeah, 400 years from now, when this this site is discovered, they'll find this bowl and they'll, you know, the archaeologists will think, I, you know, a really advanced human lived here. <laughs> um, yeah, and I've never done marbling with nail polish before. So that was interesting. Too. Um, apparently, you have to to clear out each color that you do, and I did two. I did like lavender and. Um, a magenta and I did it in sections because it sticks so quickly to the, the form to the bowl and once it sticks and you take the bowl out um, there's still this weird residue on top of the water so if you drop in fresh drops of nail polish um, it's going to curdle almost or be caught in the weird residue that's left over um, so again learning experience never done it before and I was glad to have had it <laughs> never heard of it Nail yeah, polish, oh. marbling. Yeah, hmm. yeah. I haven't, I haven't heard of that either. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah. and I guess nice. because there's vinyl in it, uh, I think that's what was probably the residue that was left over on it because so much of the pigment was sucked up very quickly by the material that, um, you know, by the paper mache, that the vinyl leaves this, the coat on there essentially. So yeah, it makes makes sense that it would sort of you know curl. But I was being impatient and, um, yeah. Learn from my mistakes. <laughs> so I'm curious though, you said you did a coiling method. So are you able to like, like, like with clay, like you roll it out into coils and then you just, oh, wow. Yeah. So yeah. I'm, I was kind of doing the coiling idea, but with strips of paper. So yeah. Yeah. yeah and it, it worked reasonably well. Again, I think if I could make the dough smoother, which I know I can, I just, you know, was too zealous with the squeezing out of the water. Um, it will, like, it will work. Like, this, this lady's um, videos are amazing. She will just start forming the paper mache over a, a, a mold and essentially it'll work like, like polymer clay almost. Cause oh. it's, 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 so you can fine. like, you can like pinch it and stuff and like kind of, yeah. wow. Yeah. And then did you, did you put an, a layer over the coils too? Um, no, I just well, attempted just, to smooth it out. Yeah, with a little putty knife and my fingers, and um, yeah, that's when like the little the bits of the dry toilet paper started coming out. I'm like, crap! So I sanded it down a bit, but um, it's just yeah, very uneven. Yeah, very workable. 
Um, and also inspired Heidi by the fact that I miss clay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There it is. But Marianne, hey, what yeah, are you hey. doing? Well, tonight? yeah, I had a hard time deciding what to do too because paper was, there's just so much. And at first I thought, like I get the Sunday Times and they have, they've had this, I think I may have mentioned it, this section called At Home Now. And um, at the back, the very back sheet is always a project to do with newspaper, something to do with your leftover newspaper. So I thought, well, I'd make one of those, but just never got to it. And then I was um, shelving <laughs> or paging in the art book area and of course we have downtown there's all kinds of books on paper crafts so I brought a bunch home and at, oh and I have one other thing I want to plug for the library too is I discovered are you familiar with this magazine flow it's a it's a magazine for paper lovers it's, it's beautiful it this I've got well I had to check out like as many as I could get my hands on and they're just there's, I mean, there's just wonderful stuff all about paper, but it's also kind of a, I don't know, what do you think, Heidi, like a, just a calming way, you know, just a, a way to live simply and, I don't know, just ideas of how to feel, I don't know, at peace and just, well, I don't know the right words for it, but the yeah. articles. I think, I think you're doing fine. The, okay, yeah. thank you. <laughs> because the articles are all over the place. Like, I was just looking, there's a, a great thing on Sophia Loren, and there's, I don't know. Anyway, I'm plugging this, this magazine. It's great. However, so I brought home a bunch of books on paper crafts, and I ended up with this one. And I did paper mache too. <laughs> Except I used, um, so I made a bird. Oh, yeah. I saw this cover and I was like, I want that bird. So I did it. And it doesn't look quite like that bird, but it's a bird. And um, the hardest part were the feet. Yeah. Getting those to work properly. So um, <clears throat> you just download the template from the website. I forget what her website is. Molly Green is the author. Um, I, I should have looked it up for you. Um, and then just put the bird together using, I used a cereal box and stuffed it with a bit of newspaper. Did the first, like the whole first layer is masking tape. And then I use, this is actually more like, this is a fairly thick cardstock kind of paper. So it was, it wasn't quite as easy. I've done paper mache with newspaper. That's how I've always done it with the same flour and water or a wallpaper kind of thing. This was a little harder to, to mold. And I just used um, Mod Podge the whole time. Just put it, soaked it with this. And um, that's how my bird turned out. That is precious. I love it. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I've just kind of had a thing for birds lately. So when I saw that, I just had to do it. Nice. And it looks like there's like a terrazzo kind of pattern on the paper. That's it's so it's actually little birds. Oh, bird on bird. That's so yeah. So when I found this little bird paper, I'm like, yeah, I got, I got to make this bird. That's beautiful. And I, I gotta say, I had so much fun making this bird. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I really love its feet too. That's that's yeah. I wish I had had um, thicker wire, mm -hmm. but I tried to use a hanger, but my wire cutters wouldn't cut it. Mm -hmm. So I had to go with the, just the thinner gauge wire and Usually he, it stands, it'll stand, but um, it takes a little, a little work. But once I get him standing, it's good. You said I don't, she, did you give I don't it a move. 
What? Did you give it a name? You said he. So what are you <laughs> doing? Do you have a name? I have not named him, but you know, I live alone and it's a pandemic. So, <laughs> <laughs> so he's going to be my friend, I guess. I don't know. Oh, he's so I funny. may give him away, but so there's my favorite. He's so cute. Did you, um, so you said you had a template, right? You like printed yes. it out. And everything. Okay, cool. Yeah. Her, all her designs, um, you just go to her website cool. and, and you download the, the template. Um, so this is called the Percher Bird. Mm -hmm. And it is chroniclebooks.com. Is her and you just go there. It's actually, I guess, the bookmaker's website. And the templates are all there. You download them, trace them, cut them out. I'm already there. <laughs> there you go. So yeah. you can probably resize the template then and make various you can make like a mega bird. You can yeah. you could. bird family. <laughs> I had a friend send me a picture. He was out for a walk the other day and he went by this house and there was a giant elephant, like a giant elephant in the front yard. Giant. And I thought, wow, that's, that's really incredible. So you, I guess you could, you could just like make a giant bird, <laughs> put it in the tree. I might put him in a tree. I don't know. That'd be really cool sort of craft um, or technique for festivals, um, the paper mache sort of technique. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you want to scale something up like that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I've never done one of the workshops mm -hmm. for festivals. Mm -hmm. I don't know how they do all, all of those. Although one year on staff day, I went there on the mm -hmm. tour and they sort of, I, but I don't know, Heidi or Aurora, do you know where all their stuff is it paper? How do they make all of that? Paper mache or what? Um, <laughs> on the year, isn't it? Each year is slightly different, I thought. Well, the, the puppets are typically paper mache. But the, the full moon stuff, I think they use like a. We made. When I went there on staff day, I don't know if it was the same staff day as you, but we made. Um, I went years ago. Okay. We, yeah. we had to make. Um, there, were, there was a wire armature and then you used packing tape because it was clear. Because they're luminaries, and so they use packing tape uh, for those. But I think the puppets, yeah, I don't know. I've never been to one of their pu puppet making, yeah. So yeah. I, I would think they use, you know, some of them are so complicated, and the structure they must need to use cardboard, you know, for for initial parts and the armature right. and that kind of thing. So, okay, you guys, he's standing. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. <laughs> It's so elegant. I love him. I can make him a nest, Marianne. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great idea. <laughs> he needs a nest. <laughs> right. I mean, actually, yeah. I should name him or. I don't know. Yeah. He needs a mate. <laughs> that's so fun oh i love the idea of a giant paper mache bird that's so cool yeah. i have chicken fire in my garage okay all right this is happening <laughs> one year they did that in um april uh festival did they make a giant bird head or something was in it a couple years back i thought yeah. yeah yeah oh the library you mean yeah they did yeah yeah. yeah, that was pretty neat. It was really colorful. I think it was upstairs on the third or fourth floor. Yeah, that was I've never seen that. That. yeah, it's in the it's in our staff area up, uh, up there on the fourth floor. I think they hung it on the wall. You're mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I'm sad under it <laughs> <laughs> and worried. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh well. So many, such versatility in paper. It's amazing. Apparently it can be like basket weaving. I never knew. <laughs> um, yeah. Nice.
Well, you guys, thank you, as always, for inundating me with ideas and inspiring me to be better at things, just in general. <laughs> oh, we cycle, we use, you know, newspaper, like, yeah, day and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, again, this is, it's so cool to see how accessible all these crafts are, because, you know, like, most people that they have around are, like, scrap pieces of paper. Um, and you wonder what to do with them because we haven't stopped getting the mail. <laughs> um, but all right. Thank you again for joining, for participating, for inspiring, for being creative, and I will see y'all later. Bye.